Hi, it's Janelle and Peter with Parsnips and Parsimony. And today I want to show you a really easy and simple crock pot meal that can be frozen as well. So you can make this a freezer meal. And I'm going to be doing both today. And it is crock pot fajitas. If you've never had steak fajitas, they are super wonderful. And this is such an easy recipe to put together. So let's get cooking. To start off with, you're gonna need a pound and a half of boneless sirloin steak. Now, if you don't have sirloin steak, or maybe you have a sirloin, but it's not boneless, don't worry about it. Just cut the bone, cut around the bone as close to you, as you can, and we can still use the meat. Now, this thinly slice your steak into about, oh, is that about a quarter inch slices? But if they're a little bit more than that, it's just gonna take a little bit longer to cook, but no biggie. So what we're gonna do is put half of this, this is three pounds of meat. I'm gonna put half of it into my crock pot and then half of it into my freezer bag. Peter, can you help me? Okay. You do half and I'll do half. We don't need to pull it apart, we can just toss it right in there. This will serve about six to eight people, depends on how hungry those people are too. Now Peter's going to add two tablespoons of lemon juice. Is that one? That's one. I'll do a half. A little, a yeah, a little less because we spilled. That's good. Two, and you're going to add two tablespoons of lemon juice to that bag. And then I'm going to start slicing up my peppers. We're going to use one pepper for each meal, except I like to put more vegetables in mine. So I'm going to be doing three peppers for the two meals. So that's a pepper and a half. Now for slicing a pepper, I like to cut it down and around like that. And then I pull it apart like that and see how it gets it nice and close. So you're not going to have a lot of waste. And I'm going to do the same thing to this one here. See if it comes out nice. There we go. And we're going to throw this in the compost because we have no use for that. And then we're just going to trim out the insides a little bit and remove any of the excess seeds like that. See how nice and clean that looks. Now, if you want to save your vegetable scraps like this, you can throw it in a, a plastic baggie or a container, throw it in your freezer. And then when you have a freezer full of vegetable scraps, you can make vegetable stock out of it if that's something you guys like to do. So now that I have these in half, I'm going to cut these into long strips. And what I'm going to do is I usually cut off the bottom like that. And this is how I cut it. Doesn't mean it's the right way, but this is the way that works fastest for me into nice long strips. We have all of our peppers here, thin, well, sort of thinly sliced. And we're gonna just divide them between the two pots. For each meal, we're going to add one sliced onion. And just cut an onion. Again, nothing intimidating here. This is super easy. I'm gonna just cut off its tail like that. Cut off its, <laughs> for lack of a better term, cut off its head, Whoop, just like that. Again, you can use your onions for stock, and then you're gonna cut it in half. I'll help peel it. And this, you just peel off the skin. So much easier than fighting with it. Just And then you'll notice that if we were to slice it this way, it would be long strips. But if I slice it this way, it's gonna be rings. And so I'm gonna slice this in rings today. Use your fingers as a claw to hold your onion. That way, if something happens, if you accidentally cut your knife, your knife cuts your hand, it's only gonna be skinning your knuckles. You're not gonna cut off your fingers like that. So use the claw and just thinly slice your onions. That was one very strong onion. I still have one more to go. But we'll dump this one into the pot. If you want to fake someone out, fine. You can just go next to an onion. Yeah. Onions oh, are very that's strong. That's a strong onion. Everybody's going to think I'm so sad doing this video. We finished cutting up this last onion. Yay! And we're going to put this one in the freezer meal. And this, if you can chop and use a knife and chop vegetables, you can do this recipe. It is so simple to put together. There's really no cooking skills involved. So this is a great beginner recipe. If you are new to cooking, definitely try out this recipe because it punches a lot of wow, but it's wonderfully delicious. Now that we've got all of our vegetables and our meat chopped up, we've got our lemon juice in here. We're gonna add our spices. We're gonna start with some ground cumin. And Peter, you can just stir this right up. Okay, we need a teaspoon and a half of ground cumin. We're gonna add a half a teaspoon of paprika. 
There you go. Then we're going to add a half a teaspoon of chili powder. Watch out, here it comes. We're going to add a pinch, and a pinch is literally a pinch of black pepper. We're going to add about a quarter teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes. If you like more, you can go up to a half a teaspoon. It just depends on how spicy you like it. Now you want to add one clove of minced garlic, and you're probably looking at this saying, this is not garlic. What I did is, because oftentimes garlic goes bad when I'm not using it fast enough, so I pureed it all with just a little bit of oil, enough to make it a flat paste, and then I froze it. And so when I want it, I just break off a hunk and throw it in the pot. So that's about a teaspoon, half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of minced garlic. It just looks like this. It looks just like regular garlic. You can also buy jarred minced garlic or you can buy fresh garlic and mince it yourself, whatever is easiest. And if you don't have fresh garlic, you can use garlic powder. You can use a half a teaspoon of garlic powder if that's what you have on hand. Lastly, we're gonna add a teaspoon of salt to our mixture. That looks good already. And Peter is using this really nice spatula from Gonda Home. They sent this to me to try out. It's a silicone spatula, but it has a lot of flexibility, but still enough firmness for tasks such as this. For this freezer meal, we don't have to mix this up with a spoon because we're just gonna actually mix it right in the package. And then you can just stick this right in the freezer like this and you have yourself a really nice freezer meal for whenever you want to have it. Now for our crock pot, that looks good Pete. So we're just gonna level it out, make sure everything is down. That's how it looks, just like that. We're gonna put the lid on it and we're gonna cook this on high for two and a half to three hours. Again, it's gonna depend on the thickness of your slices and also how hot your crock pot is. So you might wanna just test it around two and a half hours and see if the meat is nice and tender. And once it's all cooked, all you need to do is serve it with some fresh tortillas. You can pick those up at any of your grocery stores. Salsa, lettuce, shredded cheese, tomatoes, whatever you would put on a taco, you can put on this. So it's a super easy meal, absolutely delicious, packs a huge wow punch. Even if you've never cooked before, you can make this. So if you'd like to get the recipe, a printable version of the recipe, you can find that in the description below. There'll be a link for that. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I can get back to you. Thanks so much. We'll see you for our next video. Bye. Bye. There is the final product, steak fajitas. I'm serving that along with some tortillas that have been warmed in the crock pot that's been turned off. I have some sour cream, homemade salsa, tomatoes and lettuce to go all along with it.